God bless you, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to today's Marksman Prophet. My name is Wilmar Navarro, and I am your host. Today's question, are you God's trumpet? His warning. Today's bullseye scriptures are Ezekiel 33, 3 and 4, and 2 Chronicles 36, 15 and 16. Ezekiel 33, 3 and 4 says, When he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. 2 Chronicles 36, 15 and 16. And the Lord God of the Father sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. I'm going to start right here. A trumpet. What does a trumpet do? A trumpet announces uh, victory. A trumpet announces that there's an enemy in the camp. One of the words in Hebrew that means to keep and to protect and to hem in is the word shamar. A shamaring means to watch over, to take over, like an overseer, to take over in a sense of protection, to watch over, to protect, to tend, to keep away from danger, from harm. Why am I sharing this today? Because that's what a watchman does. Today's marksman prophet is about being a watchman, sounding the trumpet, because a lot of the prophets in the Old Testament, and you see some of it in the New Testament, they released a warning. Paul released a warning in the New Testament. Um, I forgot the prophet, uh, but in the New Testament, there was a prophet who prophesied and he was prophesying a famine and he was in the New Testament. So I'm sharing this with you today because it's very important to know that God releases warnings today. Yes, he releases warnings. Why do we need warnings? There's a couple of reasons why we need warnings. And there's so much more that I can share, but I'm going to share what I have in front of me. First and foremost, we see here, I said it in the uh, scripture that I shared today, the bullseye scripture. God shares a warning, releases a warning too, because he wants to protect his dwelling place. He wants to have compassion on his people, as we see here in 2 Chronicles 36, 15 and 16. And the Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God. They despised his words. And scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. So there was no remedy. Why am I sharing this today? Because it's very important to know that, yes, prophets release the blessing of the Lord, the encouragement, the exhortation of God, the comfort of God. But prophets also release the warning of God, the correction of God. Because the Bible says the Lord chastises those whom he loves. Because those who he, he chastises, those are his children. But those who he don't chastise, those are people who are known as bastards. They don't know their father. So the Lord chastises those whom he loves and correction doesn't feel good. People don't like to be corrected. The Bible says correction doesn't feel good, but when, 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 it, when you receive that correction, the correction makes you wise. The correction makes you uh, a fruitful. It, gives, it brings a fruit that you did not have before. So I'm sharing this today because I don't know why, but the Lord put this message for a while, like for two weeks. I didn't release it last week, but he had me release it this week. The warning. Are you God's trumpet? You're his warning. You're his trumpet. You're a mouthpiece. You are the one who's releasing a sound that's very distinct. It's spoken in love. The truth is always spoken in love. Let's go into the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 1 through 11. Moe said to me, son of man, eat what you find. Eat the scroll and go and speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with the scroll that I give to you. So I ate and it was in my mouth like honey and sweetness. So the word of God, the Lord asked Ezekiel to eat the word, to eat the scroll, because back then it was the scroll, to today we have the Bible. God wants you to, I don't know what I'm speaking to today, but the Lord wants you to get in the word of God. And he's going to have you to deliver messages of blessing, messages of correction, messages of warning. Watch out, people of God. Why do we need a warning? See, if we don't heed the warning, we could be in danger. I, I don't know what right, right now because the Lord's showing me I'm having an open vision and I'm seeing a sign where, 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 where God tells you like watch out there is there's a fall up ahead there is a dangerous territory up ahead there's a sign that the Lord's showing me right now for somebody who's going to listen to this message today and that the 
The Lord wants you to know that there's a warning that the Lord has been giving you for a while. You have not been heeding the warning. The Lord says, listen to the warning. You've been receiving confirmation after confirmation about this warning. To be careful with this individual. To be careful with this relationship. To be careful with this uh, uh, these people that are around you. These people who are speaking to your, to your life. Be careful because they, they don't have the best interest in you. They want to manipulate you. They want to absorb uh, uh, Observe your. Uh, uh, the, they want to take control of you. They want to. They, they want to uh, use your gift and prostitute your gift. They want to promote you so they can promote themselves so they can get wealth and fame and then they can go up and be promoted. God says, "Be careful," because I'm seeing a red warning sign. I'm seeing it right now in the spirit. I'm seeing this sign, and the Lord wants me to tell you today, people of God. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but the Lord wants me to tell you: listen to the warning. You've been seeing this warning. There's 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 construction up ahead. There's dangerous ground you're, you're treading upon. You, When you're treading on dangerous ground, you got to be very careful. It's like when you're walking on landmines, you got to be very careful because you might fall into a landmine. You might explode. I don't know why the Lord's having me go here, but the Lord had me divert completely from the scripture right now. Verse 4 says in Ezekiel chapter 3, Then he said to me, Son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words to them. For you are not sent to the people of unfamiliar speech and hard language, but to the house of Israel, people who are familiar. Sometimes God's going to send you to release a warning to somebody who's familiar to you. It could be a brother, a sister, a father, a mother. And those going to have you release a warning and be a trumpet to them. Get in line. Get away from this. Stop watching this. Stop listening to this. You need to. God is calling you to a greater level of holiness. I don't know who's speaking to today. Well, the Lord's calling you to a greater level of holiness. And the Lord is having me release a trumpet right now. And the Lord wants me to tell you that you need to get away from among them. Because worldly conversations, they corrupt good morals. The Lord says, you walk with the wise and you be counted as wise. Verse 6 is, not too many people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language whose words you cannot understand. Surely, had I sent you to them, they would have listened to you. But the house of Israel will not listen to you. Your house, your family, your, your closest friends, they don't listen to the warning. You're releasing a warning and you're trying to protect them. You're trying to protect them from danger and, and, and from things that, that, that God shows you things up ahead. God shows you the future about these people and you're not listening. You're not listening to the warning. The Lord's trying to warn you. Be careful with this individual, this person. I don't know, for the past, the, the, the time that I've been doing this um, podcast, some of these podcasts we've been talking about, be careful with wrong associations. Be careful with people who are going to divert you from the plan and the purpose of God. They are a diversion. They are a distraction. I don't know what I'm speaking to today. But the house of Israel will not listen to you. A prophet is not honor his own home, neither his own country. Because they, they will not listen to me for all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. God has you release a warning to bring people out of being a place with a hardened heart into a place of deliverance. God had Moses deliver a warning to Pharaoh with different plagues. And he did not heed the warning. And then his heart became soft after the plague was released. Does a plague have to be released over your life? Does something have to happen in your life for you to receive the warning of the Lord? I don't know who I'm speaking to today. Behold, I have made your face strong against their faces and your forehead strong against their foreheads like adamant stone, hardened than flint. I have made your forehead. Do not be afraid of them, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they are a rebellious house. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, receive into your heart all my words that I speak to you and hear with your ears. God is saying to you today, hear with your ears and receive in your heart. In the book of James, I think it believes chapter one, it says, receive humbly the engrafted word of the Lord that's able to what? Save your soul. Verse 11. And go and get to the captives, to the children of your people, and speak to them and tell them, thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or whether they refuse. See, when you are a trumpet, you have to release what the Lord has you to release. You cannot be too familiar with people. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. If God's called you to be a prophet, a prophetess, and the Lord's called you to be his mouthpiece, you have to release what the Lord has you to release. Whether it's instruction, direction, correction, protection, warning. The Bible says through a prophet, a nation was preserved, people of God. Through a prophet, there was a militude, similitudes and visions and parables that were multiplied. The prophets of old would release warnings to kings to get in line. I'm thinking about Samuel right now. The people wanted a king. I don't know who I'm listening to today. Who is listening to this today? But the Lord wants me to tell you. Some of you are wanting something, but you don't know what you're wanting. And when you receive it, you're going to understand that what you're asking for is not what you needed in the first place. God has something for you that is so much better. The king, the people wanted a king. 
They wanted a king. And God, and God sent the warning to Samuel. You don't know what you're asking for. You're asking for a king. And you don't know that kings are going to bring taxes. That kings are going to bring authority. Kings are going to bring an order. You, you, you don't know what you're asking for. And they got a king. And they got a king that, was, that wasn't fully obedient. He was disobedient. Half obedience is disobedience. It's delayed obedience. You have to be obedient because God told through Samuel to, to tell the king Saul to kill all the animals and all the people that, that were coming against the people of Israel. I don't remember right now in detail, but I'm saying this to you. He told him to kill them and he didn't. He was disobeying. And Samuel kept hearing animals. I don't remember the specific what animal it was. Or was it goats or sheep? I don't remember. But he kept hearing. He's like, why am I hearing? Why am I hearing animals? You are not obedient. And what happened? Because he did not, he did not, he did not receive the instruction of the Lord and the prophetic word of God. He did not follow to the T the word of the Lord. What happened to him? Who am I speaking to today? He lost the kingdom. Saul lost his kingdom. Saul did not only lose his kingdom, Saul lost the privilege to speak to God. The communication and intimacy with, to, to speak to God. He became crazy because he could not hear the voice of God. He even went to a, a spiritist to hear, to hear. He wanted to hear what God was saying, but a spiritist can't tell you what God's saying. But the spirit of Samuel came up and prophesied to him and told him that he was going to die. See, none of the words that Samuel spoke fell to the ground. Even after he was dead, Samuel's word stood forever. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Okay, God releases warnings so their blood is not on your head. Ezekiel 3, uh, 16 and 21. Now it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them a warning from me. The warning is not from a man. It's not from a prophet. It's from the Lord. And people of God, I know many people are used to certain type of messages, but I'm telling you today, receive and heed the warning of the Lord. If the Lord is warning his people to repent, to turn away from the foolish ways, if the Lord is warning people to repent of doing or going the wrong way, of, of, of doing certain things, listen to the warning of the Lord. You don't know what the Lord is protecting you from. You don't know what the Lord is trying to shelter you from. The Lord is trying to show you wisdom and show you an understanding of what you're going through. Verse 18. And when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die and give him no warning. Listen to that. Nor speak to the to warn the wicked from his way, wicked way, to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. Yet if you warn the wicked, he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity. But you have delivered your soul because you released the word of the Lord. You released the warning. We're in times like this, people of God. The Lord's going to release warnings. The prophets of the Lord are going to arise that they're going to release warnings upon the judgments that are going to come upon the land about people needing to repent, kings turning away, uh, presidents repenting of their sin because God has revealed what they've done in secret. The Lord in this hour, he has been exposing and he's been releasing warnings. People are not being taking him seriously. They take God as a joke and they don't see that he is a Lord and he's supposed to be reverenced, respected, and feared. But not a fear of torment and shame and punishment, but a a fear that he is God and a reverence that he is God and he is Abba, he is mighty. Verse 20, again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because you did not give him the warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning. Also, you have delivered your soul. There's a warning for wisdom. Colossians 1.28. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. A warning to get to safety. Matthew 2, 13 and 15. After the wise men were gone and, and an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, stay there until I tell you to return. Because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night Joseph left to Egypt with the child and Mary his mother. And they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord has spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. Warning to fulfill prophecy. 
Matthew 2, 19 and uh, uh, 23, the return to Nazareth. When the Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up. The angel said, take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he heard that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son, Archelaus, he was afraid to go there. Then after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophets have said. He will be called a Nazarene. Who am I speaking to today? The Lord wants me to tell you. The Lord is going to start to warn through dreams. The Lord is going to start to reveal things through dreams. Heed the warnings that the Lord is showing you. God might be showing you warnings to release to people. Or warnings for you to pray for the person. To save their soul from condemnation. Save their soul from uh, judgment. Save their soul from Soul and hell. I don't know what I'm speaking to. This is a strong word the Lord's having me deliver today. Okay. I'm going to read number 16, 1 through 5. One day, Korah, son of Esar, a descendant of Koath, son of Levi, conspired with Dayton and Abram, the sons of Eliab, and the Anson of Beleth from the tribe of Re Reuben. They incited a rebellion against Moses along with 250 other leaders, uh, leaders of the community, all prominent members of the assembly. They united against Moses and Aaron and said, You have gone too far. The whole community of Israel has been set apart by the Lord, and he is with all of us. What right do you have to act as though you are greater than the rest of the Lord's people? When Moses heard what they were saying, he fell face down on the ground. Then he said to Korah and his followers, Tomorrow morning... The Lord will show us who belongs to him and who is holy. The Lord will allow only those whom he selects to enter his own presence. Why am I sharing the scripture today? Because God, God released this scripture to me earlier because they were coming against a leader. They were coming against a man of God. And, they, and some people who are listening to me today, you might be jealous of people. You might be jealous of their anointing and their call. You might be coveting what they have. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. But the Lord wants you to repent and understand that God has chosen his people. The Bible says that God exalts the humble due season. God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. And, and these people went through a process. These people went through a suffering. And God's glory has been upon them. And their hand of God has been upon them. And God has raised them up. And you are jealous of them. And the Lord is going to deal with you. Because these people walk in humility. Be careful. How you treat one another. Be careful how you treat a leader that God has raised up for such a time as this. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but I just want to release this warning. This is a warning from the Lord. At the minute 1752, the Lord wants me to tell you, be careful how you treat leaders that God has put in place. Because Moses said, you will know that who the Lord's with. Tomorrow morning, the Lord will show us who belongs to him and who is holy. The Bible says that the Lord knows those who are his. I'm going to read number 16 and 19 and 35, what happens now. Meanwhile, Korah has stirred up the entire community against Moses and Aaron, and they all gathered at the tabernacle entrance. And the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to the whole community. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Get away from all these people so that, they, so that I may instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. Oh God, they pleaded, You are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Must you be angry for all the people? When only one man sins? And the Lord said to Moses, Then tell all the people to get away from the tents of Korah, Dath, Dathan, and Abraham. So you cannot get in the way of the Lord when the Lord is releasing a judgment, when the Lord is releasing correction. You cannot get in the way of the Lord when the Lord is releasing His righteous judgment, when God is releasing justice. You cannot get in the way. You have to get out of the way. God told Moses, get out of the way because I am coming because I'm angry with these people. So Moses got up and rushed over to the tents of Dathan and Abraham. Followed by the elders of Israel. Quick, he told the people, get away from the tents of these wicked men and do not touch anything that belongs to them. If you do, you will just, you'll be destroyed for their sins. God was telling, telling them, don't partake with them. Don't be around them. So all the people stood back from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abraham. Then Dathan and Abraham came out and stood at the entrances of their tents together with their wives and children and little ones. And Moses said, 
This is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to all to do all these things that I have done, for I have not done them on my own. See, Moses was backed up by God. When God has called you to prophesy, to decree, to declare, to release the sure word of the Lord, the Lord will back up his word. The Lord will back you up because God has called you for such a time as this. Verse 29, if these men die a natural death or if nothing usual, unusual happens and the Lord has not sent me. You hear that? If these men die a natural death or if nothing unusual happens and the Lord has not sent me. Moses was saying, you're going to see today something new you've never seen before. You're about to see how God is truly with me because they came against Aaron and me. But if the Lord does something entirely new and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them and all their belongings, then they go down alive into the grave. Then you will know that these men have shown contempt for the Lord. Remember, when people contend against you, they're not contending against you, they're contending against the Lord. And if they reject you, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting the one who sent you. Because Jesus said, my authority does not come from me, it's from my Father. All authority. They asked Jesus, well, which authority do you teach? He said, the authority that which my Father gives to me. Because my Father, all, all things belong to my Father. And what is my Father's is mine. Verse 31. And he had hardly finished speaking the words when the ground suddenly split open beneath them. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed the men along with their household and all their followers who were standing with them and everything they owned. So they went down alive into the grave along with all their belongings. The earth closed over them and they all vanished from among the people of Israel. All the people around them fled. When they heard their screams, the earth will swallow us too. They cried. Then fire blazed forth from the Lord and burned up 250 men who were offering incense. Moses released the warning. They kept doing what they wanted to do. The judgment of the Lord was released. I'm going to read this last scripture. Jesus warns and comforts his people. John 16, 1 through 4. These things I've spoken to you. That you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. This is coming people of God. They're going to push people out of churches. Yes, even greater. They're going to push people out of churches, out of synagogues. And the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that they're offering God service. These people are going to be doing this and they're thinking they're doing God a favor. They're doing it on the name of the Lord, but they're not. Because verse 3 says, and these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. They don't have intimacy with God. They live religiously. They live in tradition. They do not know God. They don't have intimacy with God. They do not behold the face of God. They don't seek the counsel of God, the heart of God, and the mind of God. But these things I've told you, that when the time comes you may remember that i told you of them see god released a warning here remember what i just told you and these things i did not say to you at the beginning because i was with you people of god i'm at minute 22 verse 44 i mean uh minute 22 47 people of god in closing <laughs> warnings are important warnings get you back in alignment warnings get you into wisdom warning gets you into understanding warning gets you into protection warnings lead you into destiny warnings are important like never before heed the warning of the lord i don't know who i am speaking to but by the spirit of god whoever is going to listen to this heed the warning of the lord the lord is warning the lord is warning you about something stop putting it aside Stop saying, ah, oh, nah. Heed the warning of the Lord. Because you might lose it all. You might lose it all like King Saul. Heed the warning of the Lord. Heed the warning of the law. You don't want to get in the way of the Lord. It's a fearful thing to be in the presence of a living God. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. This is such a strong message. I'm shaking him right now. The Lord, the Lord wants me to tell you. Heed the warning of the Lord. Do not just receive tickling of ears of prophecies. Receive the correction of the Lord because it goes well with you. Receive the, the warning of the Lord when he tells you to get away from certain relationships. When the Lord tells you, don't associate with these people. Don't align with these people. Don't go under this covering. Receive the warning of the Lord. I, am, I don't know why the Lord's having me go in this, in this tangent. But I just want to say this to you today, people of God. Wake up. Wake up and smell the roses. Smell the coffee. God is warning like never before. And God is warning us to protect us. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, 
verse chapter 19 with Abraham. God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, will I hide this from my friend Abraham? The Lord gives you a dream. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. The Lord has been giving you dreams. The Lord has been giving you visions. The Lord has been giving you warnings to release. And you have not because you're afraid of the faces of men. But we read about it in Ezekiel. That, that God has said Ezekiel's face harder than, than a stone. Why? Because he said his face is like a flint, like in the book of Isaiah chapter 50. God wants you to know you don't fear the faces of men like he told Jeremiah because I will be with you. You fear the Lord your God. That's who you fear. You don't fear the conspiracy of the land like Isaiah chapter 8 says. You fear the Lord your God. That's who you fear. That's who you reverence. I don't know why the Lord's having me go on this tangent. But release the warning. Release the warning of repentance. Release the warning. And also, before I finish saying this, do not despise prophecy, but test all things. Hold on to the good and remove the evil, remove the bad. Test the spirits to see whether they are of God. My name is Wilmar Navarro. Thank you for tuning in to today's Marksman Prophet. Today was about the warning, being a trumpet of God, and being a watchman. God bless you until next time. Bye-bye.